Last week's how-to video was all about speed control and doing drills where I put the tape on the board to lay out grids to practice running blockers, level ones, level two, level threes, and really learning to manipulate and control the speed at the back. From that video, I got a lot of responses, emails, messages, even some comments of, P of you telling me that you were struggling with how to control the speed of your bag. You could put the tape down, you put the grid down, but every time you tried to throw softer, you became wildly inaccurate. From that, I decided this would be the perfect follow-up video. And today I wanna to talk about how to control the speed, what you change in your throw to change the speed of that bag without losing your accuracy. The first step to proper speed control is choosing the right bag. I get questions all the time, people ask me, what's my favorite bag? What's the best bag? What's my top five bags? There isn't one, I don't have a favorite bag. There's never a best bag. There may be a best bag for that day, that situation, those particular boards, but there's never an overall best bag. And I'm choosing a bag, I want a bag that has a slow slide speed that when I throw my normal slide shot, it goes up and just drips in the hole ever so slightly. That's what I'm looking for when I'm testing out boards, when I'm doing down and backs. That's why I always carry a good variety of bags with me because as I change boards and tournaments, I may change bags because those board speeds may change or you know, weather conditions change and the boards go from fast to slow and maybe back to fast to get into. For those of you that throw a bag that always slams the back of the hole and drops in, you're going to struggle with trying to throw a consistent blocker because you got to take too much off to get there. For those of you that have to throw really low and hard and you really have to sling that bag to get it slide up in the hole, you're going to struggle with trying to get through a push shot because if you do get a blocker up there, now you've got to throw even harder to push those two bags up. That's why I'm looking for a bag that just barely drips in the front hole that way because I can make small changes to throw harder for the push, small changes to throw softer to get the blocker. I don't have to make big changes. When you force yourself to make those bigger changes, that's when you tend to struggle with accuracy. If you go back to one of the very first videos I did this how-to series, I talked about the throw and that from point A to point B at the release, it's a straight line. You're not arcing, you're not throwing up. It's a straight line from here to here to get that release. And so what I'm doing is for my normal slide shot, when I release the bag, I'm releasing about shorter height than me just under. Omar, I'm pretty much parallel to the ground when I release my palm flat. That's my normal slide shot. That's what I'm looking for to get that bag just to drip in. And then when I go from there, if I want to throw a blocker, I want to take a little bit off, I'm not throwing easier. I'm actually moving my release point from here. I'm going up. And by going up, I actually get that bag to go higher, a higher arc, higher trajectory, which causes the bag to land shorter and softer and not slide as far off the board. But keep in mind, when you raise that release point from here to here, you're still not throwing up. You're just moving that straight line. My normal slide shot is here to here. That blocker is from here to here. And if I wanna do a hard push, maybe I've got a blocker up there and I'm trying to push through or ride a bag up, I'm gonna release that bag a little lower to get that lower, more of a line drive trajectory to get that bag to hit and maintain its speed up the board. One of the other things when I'm choosing a bag on the fast side, I want a material that's just fast enough that when I flip it over and I throw my normal slide shot, my normal throw, that bag has enough speed to push a level one, a level two bag into the hole. I don't necessarily want the fastest material. I wanna pair that material with the slow side so that my regular throw, I push it in. And then if I need to do a level three block or maybe I gotta push up multiple bags in the hole, that's when I then throw that lower throw, lower trajectory, or maybe even I throw a little harder. I take this bag and I swing my arm a little harder to generate more speed, but it's still, it's still that straight line release. I'm just putting more speed, more velocity behind it to push that bag up to the hole. Now, when I go through an airmail, it's basically most of my airmails are either my normal slide shot release or my block release, but I'm generating more arm speed to get that bag to have more velocity. I want the bag to fly the same trajectory, but I want it to land further. That's I'm just trying to, instead of landing two feet short of the hole, I want it to land in the hole, right? It's simple, makes sense, but I've got to generate more speed to get that bag to travel further. Now, different airmails call for different releases for me. If I'm looking for my normal airmail, if, if I'm just trying to airmail over a bag, I got a block up there, I just want to airmail in, it's my block release. I'm releasing the bag above my shoulder. I want that higher arc the bag just to drop in and land. And the reason I want that is that way, if I do happen to miss, the bags tend, tend to land softer. Maybe there's a chance it still stays on the board, but it catches that hole and, and hangs on. It doesn't just fly off the back necessarily. But if I'm trying to hit maybe an and one, I'm going to do more of my slide shot release, the harder slide shot, because I want that lower trajectory, because I want that bag to hit the back of the hole, slam the back of the hole, knock that bag off and drop my bag back in. If I'm looking to drag it back, if I'm dragging a bag that's on the side of the hole or maybe the front of the hole, I'm going to throw my normal airmail. Like that just above the shoulder, normal air because I don't really need to go anything crazy. If I'm trying to drag a bag on the back of the hole, I want that bag to come higher and come more straight down to clip it. That means I'm releasing even higher that I'm going as high as I can with that straight release. I want that bag up high 
so that it comes down. It's all about making small, subtle changes in the throw to get the re desired result you want at the other board. The, the more changes and the bigger the changes you make in the throw, the greater the odds are of you making a mistake and not hitting the shot you want. And so if you can minimize those changes, over time, you're gonna become more accurate, more consistent, you're gonna hit more shots, you're gonna have more success, you're gonna win more games, you're gonna have more fun playing the game. Now, with every change that you make, there's going to be a learning curve. So when you go out there, if you're if this is not how you typically throw, when you go out and practice this, you're gonna take a step, two steps, maybe three steps backwards, but stick with it. If you stick with it over time, over a week, two weeks, a month, two months, all of a sudden, those one, two, three steps back become three, four, five, six, 10 steps forward, and you'll see the long-term improvement of it. But you've got to put time in on the practice board. I hope this video helps you. For those of you who maybe don't struggle with speed control, drop a comment down below, shoot me a message. What's the one area, what's the one thing in your throw or in your game that you struggle with the most? Where's the one area that you can make the biggest improvements? Let me know, and maybe that'll become a future video just as this one became. As always, I thank you guys so much for your support, and I thank you for watching.